Today we're going to be talking about two products, and we're also going to talk about some of the unique problems you can solve with them. Okay. One of them is SolarWinds Server and Application Monitor, which I'm sure many of you people are familiar with. We're also going to talk about SolarWinds App Optics, which I'm also going to guess that many of you have never heard of. But both of the products we're going to talk about in the context of APM. Let's start first by defining APM, because there are so many definitions out oh, there. Yeah. Thank God for Wikipedia, because you know what? I looked them up, so now I've got the answers. So what does APM stand for? Here's one, Asset Protection Manager. Well, that's actually out of financial services. But if you think about how important applications are today and how much money is spent on technology, protecting those assets is pretty important. So yeah. this could apply to what we do. Another example is Automated People Mover. Well, I guess if you've been to Disneyland or Disney World, you've probably Disneyland. rid on one of those. Oh, yeah. But I'd suggest if you've ever been woken up, like we all have at 3 in the morning, major systems down, those. you get moving pretty fast. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that, that was kind of silly. What I really want to talk about is application performance monitoring or application performance management. Okay. And to keep it simple, what is the definition? It's about getting visibility into the performance and availability of your key applications, including the underlying infrastructure. Yep. It's about quickly pinpointing and getting to the root cause of problems so you can get them remediated fast. And the third thing is you've designed these applications to meet a certain performance criteria. Yep. These tools can help make sure that you're delivering on that design. Yeah, I mean, with any APM solution, I mean, you need to look at everything from commercial off the shelf stuff to custom code level stuff to infrastructure, like you said, and anywhere in between on premises or in the cloud. Really, the APM solution, whatever you choose, it needs to make sure and alert you that the the application is up and running because that is going to cost you time, money, support tickets, whatever. So, I mean, it, these things can be all over the place, but all these things play into just how is the application running as a whole. Well said, Jared. Why don't we dig in and, and show a couple of troubleshooting examples, and why don't we start with SAM? Okay, so here's the SAM dashboard. Uh, and so what SAM's really good is on the commercial off-the-shelf software, COT. So Microsoft, Exchange, SharePoint, Apache, semantic stuff like that. So quickly, you'll actually see that we've got the uh, applications all sorted right there. So you know when tickets come in, they're gonna come in, email's not working, website is down, minimal details, so we're gonna kinda sort them that way. Uh, Sam's got 250 plus templates out of the box, another thousand on the community, so these templates are predefined with a bunch of different values, different uh, components you need to monitor. So for somebody that doesn't know exactly what they're looking for, it's a great place to start saying, the intelligence is built in. Yeah, we are going to say, hey, these are this is what you should monitor. It's these components. We also change the value, or not the values, but the thresholds, because it's not all zero to 100. Something at a three may be terrible. So we're going to put that value in there. So I got, uh, I'm going straight into the exchange example. So I can come in here and I can quickly see all the components we're pulling back. I've got a mailbox issue. I've got some, uh, looks like some, failure issues over here, I've got copy issues, I've got replicate, this thing's a hot mess. I can see users, but I mean, really, you can just start drilling in here and seeing when things went down, performance counters, anything along those lines. Again, I just apply this template and all this comes back, so I'm not having to have a deep technical knowledge of what I need to monitor. The template kind of gives me a good for you. Yeah, so what's great about that is I've got all this, but it also shows me a newer feature in here is this right here, where it's show me my connections. We no longer live in a small business server model where it's one server, one app, one everything. This is all multi-tiered, multiple, multiple infrastructure. So I'm seeing all the connectivity. In this case, these are exchange connections and they're talking to this exchange server uh, with 53 milliseconds of latency and no packet loss. But I can use that data and Sam will automatically do this for you and show you a topology view. So again, I can start seeing what makes this up. So I can click the application. I can see Exchange is talking to Exchange. It's on this host over here. It's talking to Active Directory. It's got to get its permissions from somewhere. So again, I can be a completely uh, newbie and come in here and all this is built out for me. Wow, that's powerful visualization. So that gives me kind of a good layout of, hey, here's all the things talking, but I can come in here and take it even further. If I need to start really drilling in, I can actually click back into Exchange and use the feature called PerStack. This is where we're gonna really start uh, pulling out those individual components and metrics. So I can actually click there. It's gonna open it up and it's gonna come out with all my, or not all, but a set of predefined components and I can actually drill into more so I can see, hey, what's hot, what's cold, anything along those lines up and down the stack. I can see I've got errors here. I had uh, high IO rights there. So this is really great 
What it also did though, just like before, it pulled in all the related infrastructure. So again, I can come over here and drill in the other servers. In this case, it's like local storage, but if I had actual physical array, I can pull that in. Again, this is great. It just ties all that in there so you know what you're doing. Yeah, that sounds like they can really shortcut getting to the end result and finding where the problem is. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, why don't I show you an example okay. of App Optics? You know, it's funny. These products solve similar problems, but in some cases they're very different, but getting to the same result, keeping Absolutely. things up and running and keeping them moving fast. All right, why don't I show you a demonstration here cool. of App Optics? So uh, before I get going, just a real quick five second tour of App Optics. What you see here on the screen is the, um, the full product. It includes infrastructure monitoring, application monitoring. We have 135 integrations and frameworks. Every one of them comes with pre-populated dashboards. Okay. I won't get into all that, but all the things you'd expect and monitoring and alerting on the infrastructure and the application are there. But let me get into the use case I wanted to talk about. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop right in here, uh, click on our APM icon. And what you see here is about 10 services that make up this hotel booking service. And what we're looking at is everything you need to literally build a modern application. These services could be running across multiple hosts, containers, uh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna drill down into this web tier because I think we've been seeing some problems and you can look at some information here, okay. but let's start to do our drill down. Well, now I'm looking at all the transactions that make up the web tier and get a little information on response time by the services, HTTP status code. So there's a lot of information here. This is like what I would call application monitoring 101. Let's go even further. So because we've been getting all these calls, I'm gonna change this to look at the activity the last six hours. And now I'm gonna click on these 32,000 transactions. And what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna look at them in the context of this scatter plot or, 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 or heat map, heat map yeah. right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, let me look at some of these outliers. So just by kind of highlighting a group, it's gonna show me these specific transactions at that time. So now I'm gonna click on this one at 10.56 in the morning. Okay. Now what I have is a deep, detailed transaction trace. This is all auto-instrumented. Okay. So no coding, no configuration. Oh, nice. And what you see here is not only each service that made up that transaction, but how much time it took in each part and how many spans or calls it took for each one of those. For example. Oh, I already see the database. Yeah, like, oh my God. Really high. So like 921 calls just for a 2.4 second uh, trace. Now. It could be well designed yep. or not, or it might just need more resource, but maybe it does need to be redesigned. So that's something I can drill into right here. I could look at every one of those calls, but let me just take a look at one of them, all sorts of information right down to the query that was executing wow. in that service for that transaction. Another thing that jumps out with this trace is this spring framework, this Java code that had six errors in it. That's not good. Okay, and it also, between that and the Mongo database, it took up 95% of the whole transaction's time. So yeah. here's two areas we've got a problem. In the spring, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I was already can see that some of your transactions were in the milliseconds and then you've got one that's over a second. Exactly, so I can drill down and a newer function over the last several months, we added something called code profiling. Okay. So now for that spring service, I can drill down literally into the codes that we're executing. Wow. So I'm looking at the database queries, I'm looking at the code. This really makes it easy for me to drill down. But we can actually take another step and this is something we've recently announced. Uh, with this distributed trace and all these services, all of these services could be shooting log, log events, right? All, they all spit logs. Right? And a lot of people talk about logs as being the proof or, or the evidence, if you yep. will, right? One plus one. So what we've done with two of our log management products, we've integrated them. Oh. So there's this button right here. If I click on search logs, what's gonna happen, it's gonna go into Logly Log Management. Right. Or it could go into Paper Trail. And what it's done is we've embedded a trace ID in every one of those log lines for all those services that were creating logs. Yeah. And now what I've done is I've grouped all of those logs for all those services, so now I can dig even deeper to see where or what, you know, which log line might give me some specific details about why. So now what I've just showed you is the when, the what, and the why, all of this for custom coded apps. You know, both of these products are very good on their own, but together they make a very powerful partnership yeah, I mean, if you were just concerned with just straight commercial off the self stuff, then then Sam is the product for you. If you were just in DevOps or cloud or something like that, where you really just cared about code level stuff, then definitely 
uh, app optics makes the sense, but we do have an integration between the two for most organizations that are running both traditional Windows and Exchange stuff and then custom stuff. So they do integrate to meet both needs. Right, which, which really meets that common use case. Yeah, there's also, you know, if, if you don't want to manage software, you don't want to worry about installing it, or if you want to monitor your environment from outside the data yeah. center, as a SaaS-based product, app optics may be the fit. I think the key here is, regardless what you choose, both of these SolarWinds products, they solve these problems, keep your availability, make you fully aware of the performance so you can really do a good job as an IT professional. Yeah, regardless of where you're seeing problems or what you need to monitor, you know, we have a solution for you. Yeah.